Jesus explains, Your perseverance and patience bear fruit and bring thousands to me. November 10th, 2015 Words from Jesus through Sister Claire Spoken by Jackie Jesus began, My children, patience and perseverance do not come easily. They are won at the cost. The cost of constant effort and vigilance over your fleshly nature. In the world you are not accustomed to wait and persevere. Many things are offered to you for your instant gratification. From fast foods, to drugs, to uncommitted sexual relations, to buy things on credit, buy now, pay later. None of these things support virtue, rather they enhance the impatience and compulsive nature in man to gratify every possible craving. Breaking loose from this merry-go-round of gratification is not easy. It requires constant effort. Fatigue weakens your resolve and gives compulsions the upper hand. Much of what people treat as a psychiatric disorder is merely the result of being raised in an instant gratification society. Even television bends the mind to expect results faster. You become programmed that things, which normally takes months and years to accomplish, come full circle before your very eyes within an hour of your time. That does leave an impression, a groove in your consciousness, that life can be lived on the fast track. This, of course, leads to serious errors in judgment and thinking that leave adults in their 30s still thinking like adolescents. Many serious mistakes are made that impact the next generation. Your children then become the byproduct of this way of life. Here is where I must step in and help you to return to a life of sanity, of cycles that promote different aspects of your lives. The sowing, cultivating, harvesting and resting cycles, each covering periods of month in which certain things fall into order. It is far too complicated for me to explain here, but suffice it to say, the lunar and solar cycles of life on Earth were deliberately designed to optimize a balanced life. Man, by using technology, has thrown this out of perspective, so that you are reaping when you should be sowing, cultivating when you should be resting, and impatiently jumping from one cycle to another at will. My point is, patience, perseverance, temperance have been distorted and enable the reasonings for sinful decisions that can ultimately result in the loss of your soul. Most of you on this channel have come to grips with the idea that things take time, yet some of you are quite impatient and discouraged with yourselves. I give you far more time to accomplish things than you give yourself. I see how deeply entrenched you are in these unnatural rhythms, and I understand that turning you is a lengthy project that must happen over time. I want you to understand that about yourself as well. Much of the discouragement you experience from day to day has to do with dissatisfaction of yourself. Things just don't happen fast enough. I'm not giving you blanket permission to sin. I'm giving you answers as to why your lives seem so frustrating and slow to change. There is also a spirit of ambition to take into consideration. Combined with perfectionism, this pair is formidable in lowering resolve, self-esteem and a sense of control by causing you to constantly overreach your limits, which, despite your most aggressive efforts, ends in failure. Time after time this becomes a pattern, and you begin to slacken in resolve. 
This is a very effective way to discourage you. So yesterday I presented you with an image of perseverance and an image of compulsion, the tortoise and the hare. Today I want you to find yourself in these two characters and begin to apply godly wisdom to the way you go about things. Satan is very clever in using the principles of time against you to cause anxiety, insecurity and forced moves. When he said that, I was reminded of some things Ezekiel and I have gone through, and I chimed in here. Boy, have I seen that in my life. I remember a sense of having to escape to South America before everything crumbled in the U.S., and this was based on a prophetic word given by a well-established prophet and an invitation from pastors kind of egged that on to go to Colombia, South America. This was about 20 years ago. It turned out to be a waste of time as far as escaping events because nothing happened in our country, which probably was the mercy of God at the time. But the Lord used it anyway, as we were able to minister all over Colombia. There were a couple of times early on in our marriage when we felt the urgency to relocate and they seemed to be false starts. You would be amazed of how many stories just like yours are common in the lives of believers. My people, do not be ashamed of these failures. Do not allow the enemy to beat you with embarrassment. Many, many times it was prayer that averted disaster after you had committed to move. And it was your faith that caused you to think this way. That is nothing to be ashamed of, although to the world, you are despised and ridiculed for this kind of thinking. What I'm referring to here is putting off important life decisions that are necessary stages in your lives, thinking that there is no more time left to you. Here is a delicate balance between acting and waiting. If you are very attentive to me, you will know the times and the seasons. If that should suddenly change, you will also know that, as you did this past June, 2015. Right now, thousands upon thousands are converting from Islam to Christianity. Had the bride been taken, these souls would have perished. Here I want to share Ezekiel's vision, which he had just a few days ago. There was a long cliff as far as you could see. It dropped off into a deep and wide chasm, and people by the thousands, men, women and children, as far as you could see, they were all running headlong off the cliff into this horrible abyss that was belching red and orange, fire and black smoke. The abyss had many ledges and different levels, and the most horrific monstrous demons were ripping and tearing and torturing these people in different ways. It was a place of unspeakable horror. It left a terrible imprint on my mind for two days and nights that I just couldn't get rid of. On the third day, I woke up in fear and anxiety at what I had just seen for the last two days. The Lord then showed me the edge of the abyss, the same image, only this time a large human hand and arm came down, slamming on the edge of the abyss and stopping the people from going any further. Then I saw the relief workers in Syria who were martyred in August of this year, that was 2015, according to Charisma magazine. Eleven martyrs, eight men, two women and a 12-year-old boy. I saw them in paradise and they were being paraded on the shoulders of heavenly souls, waving palm branches and celebrating them with great rejoicing. 
The image went back to the crowds at the abyss, and the people were turning and running the opposite direction, towards a large, luminous cross. Jesus continued, What you read and heard and imagined from the report was indeed frightening beyond compare. However, remember that I am faithful and my protection was with these martyred souls. Even in the moments of great pain and anguish, torture and death, I had already begun to lift them up and out of themselves, and their shining souls were so wrapped in ecstasy and heavenly bliss before my face, they felt nothing, thought nothing, and did nothing but glorify me and my name, with eyes turned heavenward, in a strong and powerful witness to the crowds that had gathered. Isis forced thousands of people from the city to congregate where these were to be publicly raped, beheaded and crucified. It was reported by several witnesses that these martyrs were continually calling out to the crowd to give their lives to Jesus, looking up into the sky, smiling and saying, Jesus! Jesus, Jesus, while horrible things were being done to their bodies. Jesus continued, That is why there are so many reports of untold thousands converting to me. There's a bigger picture. There's a bigger wisdom. That's why the rapture was delayed in June 2015. There were very excellent reasons, and because of your patience, and perseverance, thousands upon thousands are being converted and giving their lives to me. I'm not done with this harvest yet, my beloveds. They are still coming to me by the thousands, and you are partakers in this harvest because you have chosen to support my desire by prayer, patience, and perseverance. So do not grow weary with delays. Know that these two will be added to your account in heaven.